This is a black hole. We picture it as a massive, extremely dark region of space that draws everything toward it. The singularity, the central point where everything squishes together, is the destination for anything that falls inside. However, what if we told you that's not exactly how black holes work? Hello and welcome to Z. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. What could be the true meaning of a singularity and what lies beyond this pitch black curtain? Prepare to explore a surreal network of black holes where reality is far beyond our imagination. Black holes are complex space phenomena that go beyond all imagination. A massive star, roughly 10 to 20 times the mass of the sun, collapses in on itself and disappears when it runs out of fuel, disrupting the equilibrium between gravity and pressure. Supernova the issue with our current comprehension is that we employ several theories to account for occurrences occurring at various scales. When applying quantum field theory to astronomical sizes, scientists find that it is useless and must instead turn to Einstein's general relativity to describe the complex behavior of particles, from atoms to the smallest subatomic building blocks of matter. Choosing the appropriate theory and calculations will yield accurate answers, but black holes are difficult to understand at first because they are large stars that rapidly contract to much smaller, sometimes quantum, sizes. For instance, to become a black hole, the sun must compress to a radius of approximately 1.8 miles. The short CH radius, a threshold, theoretically allows any object to transform into a black hole. If you're wondering how big our planet must be in order to become a black hole, Picture the entire Earth as a ball with a radius of 0.35 inches. However, if an object's radius is zero, traditional calculations involving math and physics become meaningless, and the simplest representation of a black hole would begin with tiny particles of matter floating in space. These particles don't press against anything. Instead, they just hang there, resembling tiny dust particles floating relatively close to one another without moving much. However, Gravity in space causes everything to gravitate toward one another, compressing the space between the particles over time. Eventually, the intense combination of a black hole's mass and gravity causes the space around it to compress, creating an event horizon that allows some matter to enter, but prevents much else from leaving. This type of black hole is known as a Schwarzschild black hole because, although it has mass due to the amount of matter that went into creating it, it no longer has any electric charge or spinning motion. For the sake of this experiment, consider what would happen if you were to cross the event horizon of a black hole of that size. Let's pretend the hole is large enough for you to enter with a spaceship. Once inside, you would panic and attempt to escape by using thrusters to accelerate back out. No matter which way the spacecraft is facing, the core singularity will attract you, according to physical theory. To understand this, imagine a long, tight corridor with only a door at the end as the only means of exit. Once you step into this corridor, the door shuts behind you, and there's no way to open it again. The corridor has a moving walkway much like the travelator in an airport, and it's taking you forward at the speed of light no matter which way you try to move either running in the opposite direction of the walkway or moving sideways you'll still end up being carried forward by the walkway. Or at least this is how scientists thought black holes acted however space-time gets way more complicated when you have a mass which rotates and so far we only know about the existence of black holes that have angular momentum or a spin they form from the collapse of rotating massive stars and, and as matter collapses the rotation is conserved leading to the formation of a spinning black hole quantum mechanics was created to explain the strange world of miniature scales but instead of giving us answers it led to more uncertainty like fluctuations in the fabric of space-time, and these quantum fluctuations play a significant role when it comes to event horizons surrounding black holes now we've all heard. That nothing can escape a black hole, but this is where things get tricky near an event horizon particles and antiparticles spontaneously pop in and out of existence, annihilating one another almost instantly, but what if one of these particles manages to escape the stronghold of a black hole, the late great Stephen Hawking explained this with his theory of Hawking radiation when a particle-antiparticle pair forms near the event. Horizon one of them falls into a black hole while the other one escapes and by doing so the free particle steals energy from the black hole if you give it enough time, 
and we're talking numbers impossible to imagine 10 to 68 to 10 to the 103 years a black hole would evaporate completely leaving nothing behind, but if there's nothing left behind where does this infinite singularity go then and the real universe infinites do not exist, or at least we haven't found any yet and, so when scientists make calculations which lead to an infinity it means that there's, something wrong with the theory it's too simple to be applied to extreme cases consider a guitar string softly plucked at its resonant frequency using the most basic wave model behavior if singularities aren't real then perhaps at the center of every black hole lies something entirely different something beyond our comprehension but as always scientists have some ideas in theory the string vibration would grow exponentially over time vibrating past the moon and stars out to infinity, and then back. However, although this is what the model predicts, it's not what happens in reality. The fact that the model includes an infinite says it's oversimplified, and has certain limitations while working perfectly to explain string vibrations when they're small you still need a better theory to avoid infinites. Penrose's theorem states that singularities in general relativity are unavoidable. Gravity should force anything in space to follow a specific path. The theory suggests that the structure of space-time unites the universe into a single, vast fabric shaped by certain geodesic lines. These paths are never-ending, just like a line drawn over a spherical object, but Penrose suggested that geodesics should converge inside black holes, ending at their centers. This means that paths of space-time itself terminates, and you have a singularity or an infinity. A geodesic is essentially the shortest and most efficient path both spatially and temporally. Stephen Hawking thought that the Big Bang originated as a singularity or geodesics that trace back to a single point. However, a recently published paper by Roy Kerr suggests a very different perspective on black holes, where the rotation of matter marks the boundary instead of a single event horizon. Spinning black holes have two distinct horizons, an inner one and an outer one, beyond which nothing can escape. These horizons are like invisible walls that denote the regions where the gravitational pull is so strong that even light cannot escape. Moreover, arrow spurs, swirling zones that surround rotating black holes, occur when space-time rotates faster than light. If you happen to be there, you will be unable to stay stationary, no matter how hard you try to move. In this way, these ergo spurs are like whirlpools in space-time that influence the movement of nearby objects that come into contact with each other, producing very bright light due to the insanely fast things that move there. In theory, an object that managed to escape an ergosphere would leave with a lot more energy than it entered with. This mechanism is the source of nearly infinite energy, but figuring out how to extract it seems impossible. Angular momentum enables the singularity, smoothing out the structure instead of giving it a sharp shape. To visualize this, picture a drop of paint falling onto a piece of paper. If the paper is stationary, the paint forms a single dot, but if you spin the paper quickly, the paint forms a ring-like structure. Once the particle path fills up a three-dimensional shape, particles around spinning black holes move in all directions, creating a kind of donut shape in space. Particles attracted by a rotating black hole won't just cross the event horizon, heading straight into the central singularity. The paint spreads out, creating a ring-like shape. Therefore, if matter falls into a black hole along this perplexing path, its path isn't like a simple circle that stays in one place. Instead, it moves all over the place, kind of like a bee buzzing around in the air. It's not like dropping a stone into a pond where it sinks straight to the bottom. Instead, it's more like tossing a leaf into a strong wind. The wind's swirling motion carries the leaf in all sorts of directions, sometimes pushing it closer to the ground, other times lifting it upward, called Kerr black holes. These spinning celestial monsters don't have real singularities, and matter doesn't necessarily end up falling inside their central singularities. Instead, past the event horizon, the centrifugal force creates an almost normal space-time just around ring singularities where objects can move in different directions, and they might be able to do so for a very long time. So what is this ring singularity? Basically, it's a gravitational field inside a black hole, the product of a spinning object, but here's a mind-boggling follow-up. A star that collapsed to form this black hole would still be there inside a dark space. Monster chunks and bits of the star follow the paths of geodesics, never ceasing to exist, and even light would still be present. 
Can you imagine a place like that? An almost perpetual centrifuge isolated from the outside universe, but one that has its own small world swirling around and illuminated by ethereal light? What do you think about this new perspective on black holes? Please leave your comments below. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to learn more amazing facts about the enigmatic world we live in, please visit our website. I appreciate you watching. Music.